This is the Vintage Tracker Classic beautiful electric bike that's styled after these older track bikes kind of looks like a motorcycle it ships as a class two meaning it has a trigger throttle and pedal assist and it's sort of an advanced pedal assist this is thune torque sensor but it also measures cadence and that's important because this is a single speed electric bike there are no gears no derailleur no internally geared hub this is a crystal light gearless direct drive hub motor and this thing is rated 750 to 3000 watts okay it kind of depends on your geography we're in canada right now near downtown vancouver and so here it's actually 500 watts they have different tunes that the motor controller can be set for i double triple checked with the guys actually got to speak with the founder of the company andrew this thing puts out up to 160 newton meters of torque which is just incredible uh, for comparison a lot of the mid-drive motors will put up you know 70 to 90 newton meters of torque hub motors tend to be even less even planetary geared hub motors it's like you know 50 to 60 so to see 160 is just incredible and i i think you know if you imagine inside here there's this copper winding and there are these stators and if you have a, a taller hub like we do here you you get an increased mechanical advantage over the wheels and these wheels are 26 inch so that's you know there are there are definitely taller wheels out there 27.5 28 it just works really well and i've got to say it's very very satisfying it's smooth it's quiet i'll show you that a little bit later and then the battery pack i mean this is really a star of the show right here this is a 48 volt system a lot of other electric bikes are just 36 volt so 48 volt 23 and a half uh, amp hours over one kilowatt hour of capacity and that's important when you're really juicing it that battery is 19 pounds pretty heavy with this aluminum alloy casing and the motor is about 10 and a half pounds i weighed this bike back at the shop i was at vintage iron and uh, the gentleman there helped me and it weighed 84 pounds, which surprised me. On their website, it says 88. So I think they have reduced the weight with the new motor tuning and I think the battery design. They have these high energy density cells. I do want to call out the charge port for the battery right here. You can see it's low on the right side of the bike, which that's kind of nice because the bike's tipping towards the kickstand. So this is a little bit more accessible. But with those long handlebars, just careful not to hit your head. Um, kind of turn the bike like this a little bit, make it easier to reach. But it's still in the path of that. That crank arm if it were to you know kind of pedal around and pass by the kickstand position it's right there at the center of the bike to give you um, good even weight distribution but it does create this pedal lock so in some ways there's just a little bit of crowding going on on both sides the charger it's a little bit heavier it's a couple pounds fairly big i don't know if i would carry it around with me but the good news is it it's five amps so it's a very fast charger it's not quite as fancy as the charger that we saw in the 72 volt series where you could set the maximum charge level from 80 to 100 percent i think all in all a five amp charger for you know 1100 kilowatt hour battery is is great well i flipped the bike around so you can see that kickstand a little bit better and i want to talk about these cranks these are forged aluminum alloy 170 millimeters which is very standard and then we've got these kind of vintage styled pedals here they do offer good traction and you know you could press snow and mud through them because they're open like that uh, but they're not not as big as some of the newer pedals i've seen from welgo they have a bmx pedal or even a magnesium pedal that comes in different colors so you could get silver or black if you're someone with larger feet you just want a bigger surface area i want to call out the 14 gauge spokes up front black they look really nice and 12 gauge spokes in the rear so these are extra thick and they're going to give you that strength for all the power that's running through this system. Just nice to see that they've taken that step. And even the rims, they're a little bit wider to support these high volume tires. You know, it does kind of resemble a motorcycle and it does have that throttle action, but it is still classified as class two, unless you pay a little bit extra. I think it's 150 bucks and you get like a little race chip that goes right here and that can unlock a higher top speed. They say up to 26 miles per hour. If you wanna go even faster, check out the 72 volt series and i think you can get up to like 40 miles per hour 
a lot of potential for this. But even for neighborhood riding like I've done today, it's just really comfortable and beautiful. Look at this. It's like a riser cruiser swept back handlebar here steel. So it has some vibration dampening qualities to it. And then this custom designed fork, it's rigid. There's no suspension. That's another one of the differences between this and one of the 72 volt series, but it's actually fairly comfortable with these higher volume tires. So again, steel for extra strength. We've got this dual crown setup, aluminum alloy, very, very custom. This is a 20 millimeter axle down here. So for comparison, a lot of bicycles and electric bikes just have a nine millimeter axle with a quick release skewer. This has boost hub spacing, so it's a little bit wider and just really sturdy. Again, almost like a motorcycle or a moped. Back here, we have a really thick 12 millimeter threaded axle. And then we've got those steel, just sort of a horizontal dropout to get that chain tension just right. And the tire specs are 26 by 2.35. These are Schwabi Balloon fat frank so 2.35 a little bit wider you get a bit more air volume for comfort since we don't have uh, any other suspension elements on the bike that's really nice and it's going to give you some stability side to side and it actually makes the wheel a bit taller so you have uh, a lower attack angle and it just smooths across these cracks and bumps a little bit easier these do have k guard three so puncture protection and they have that beautiful reflective sidewall stripe and they're brown so that's part of the whole styling if you look at these leather grips with these leather rings locking beautiful this leather saddle and then the brown tires it just it all comes together nicely and i do want to point out these uh, leather cuffs right here that's going to protect the frame if you oversteer and they make contact with that top tube one thing we don't have here is bottle cage bosses so we just don't really have space given where the the battery is mounted instead you could wear a backpack or you could get one of their rear racks and then they have some panniers and trunk bag options uh, really again for cruising around just having a good time it's set up to look really good but there is some utility here with these fenders these ones are actually steel um, whereas the chain cover is aluminum alloy and I again I talked to Andrew and he said well we're gonna have some that are aluminum alloy I mentioned that because if you scratch steel fenders over time they could rust a little bit and this paint is just so nice um, I would be I would be careful with that so steel 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 handlebar and they do have some nice again vibration dampening qualities and a little bit quieter because it's just it's a solid sturdy metal uh, aluminum can sometimes rattle a bit but look at these fender skirts on the sides and their paint match everything looks so nice and you're going to get pretty decent coverage if it does get wet out we are in vancouver it does rain here so that's kind of a nice feature this bike is only available in one frame size, but there's a little bit of adjustment you can do just by tipping the, the handlebars forward or back. I like that the saddle can actually be raised or lowered so you can get that full leg extension if you do pedal, but with the single speed drivetrain, it's kind of like, well, you know, you can see right now that it's actually in a low position, kind of makes it look cool for the photos. And if you're using the throttle, just feels more natural your feet go out and then kind of down versus you know straight up and down on a more active bike if you wanted to improve ride comfort a little bit you could swap this 27.2 uh, millimeter diameter rigid seat post with a suspension seat post and they do have silver ones but then this interface for that rear light might be compromised you might have to figure something out so you know it's kind of set up beautifully the way it should be and you you kind of just you know you have some trade-offs if you don't like the cream color that we see here they do have a graphite blue that looks beautiful as well and up to the cockpit here so you can see we don't have a traditional stem which would be sort of a single tube and a single clamp this is this is a bit more custom and it's connected to that swept back steel handlebar cruiser style i mentioned the locking grips before they're a little bit fatter than normal and they just have this really unique beautiful look that matches the rest of the bike there's the trigger throttle and then here are the brakes so these are pro max lucid they're like three maybe four finger levers so there's plenty to grab onto and pull it's nice when you have a heavier bike like this and you can go faster and on the right side we actually have that motor inhibitor so that's what would activate regenerative braking in the past these bikes have had like a little red button that you would press so you would have to actively engage it or intentionally press the button while also dealing with the brakes and with this bike it's only on the right lever um but yeah, as soon as you pull it, right before the, the brake pads actually make contact, you're going to feel the motor go and start to slow you down and recuperate some of that energy, which is really nice. In the front here, we have a 203 millimeter disc brake rotor from Pro Max, and that is excellent. A lot of your weight shifts forwards as you stop. So having just a, a wider brake is going to 
allow it to cool more effectively and also just stop the wheel in a, in a more powerful way. Um, sort of like we were talking about the hub motor itself being a little bit taller and getting that mechanical advantage. Same thing with the brakes. We have a big dual piston caliper right there, dual piston in the rear as well. And this is a 160 millimeter rotor. I've seen uh, some of their literature says it should be 180. I think it just depends on supply chain, whether it's 160 or 180, it's still hydraulic. Um, but I, I did want to point that out and it looks like you might be able to, to upgrade this or, or change it. I haven't had any problems stopping, uh, but yeah, it's really nice to have that big rotor up front and, and I would like to see a 180 back here to get that same power for stopping. The 72 volt scrambler I looked at the other day, that was priced at just under 7,000 bucks. So this one's about 5,500, significant savings. You're on the 48 volt system. The top speed, the unlocked race mode is a little bit lower. The torque rating is a little bit lower. You don't have the suspension fork, but it's still an amazing bike. And I can see why some people would, you know, maybe want the fenders or that more cruiser style handlebar that we've got here. Vintage has been around since 2013. I've covered their bikes. Uh, many years and, and I'm friends with the founder. He's got a little segment with Jay Leno where he did Jay's Garage and that was right when they got started. So I've seen the style and a lot of the hardware has actually remained the same, like the display and stuff, but they've really refined it. You know, when you look at the, the battery and the motor, fine tuning that, the fenders, everything just looks a little bit cleaner, but I love that they're so supportive. I mean, you can upgrade this to a 72 volt system. They'll send you different motor tunes. The hardware, a lot of it is, is interchangeable and even having the different color choices, I really like that about this particular model. In addition to the base price, it's $199 shipping to the contiguous US, $75 if you live locally in the Bay Area, California, they'll deliver it, or you can just drive over to Santa Clara to their headquarters and pick it up for free. In some ways, this is a pricier electric bike, but it's just so unique, and I was surprised that the price hasn't increased very much since I covered some of these models a few years ago. They've, they've really kept things pretty stable. So I found a shady spot here and I wanted to go over the display with you. It really hasn't changed. It's fairly readable, even though it's not, you know, it's not a center mounted, really big color display. The grayscale, the contrast is good. On top, there's an M button. And if you hold that for a couple seconds, it powers it on. And we've got a battery infographic there and it has five bars. So each bar represents 20% capacity. It'd be nice if there was an actual percentage or maybe 10 bars to give you more precision. But you know, it kind of works and the high capacity battery on this bike will still get pretty decent range. In order to use the throttle, you need to be in one of the five levels of assist. So these buttons down here, there's an up and down arrow. And if we take it down to zero, the throttle isn't gonna work, pedal assist isn't gonna work, but we could still turn on the lights. So if I hold the up button for just a second here, there we go. And the display has some backlighting as well. Now this is a Cree LED, super bright. I think it's like 600 lumens. And back here, we have a seven LED. I thought it was six, but we have two LEDs at each end. This used to be the Supernova E3, three LED light. I just love the way this is connected to the, the saddle clamp right here. It's an aluminum alloy bar and it's adjustable here. So you can really dial this in. You'll notice that it's still visible above this rear fender. I think this is, is just excellent. It's definitely uh, higher quality and brighter than I'm used to seeing. And it just, it fits there so perfectly. Even if you get the, the rear rack or start to add some of the accessories on this bike. So back to the display itself. You can see we're in assist level zero. We can take it all the way up to five. And I've been doing a lot of my riding in level three, some in level five to really get those zippy shots. It's really powerful, very fast acceleration. And then over here we have our current speed in miles per hour. If I press the M button, we're gonna cycle through to average speed, max speed, odometer, trip distance, trip time, and back to speed, okay? Now, you also have walk mode. So just like we held up, if I hold down, that rear wheel is going to kick in and give us just a nice, slow, smooth speed for walking the bike up maybe like a ramp out of a cellar, or the other day I was walking this up a boat ramp, maybe just across the park, because it, it is a heavy bike, 84 pounds, you know? It's, it's quite a bit, especially if you had a flat tire or something. And then the last piece here is if we hold the up and down buttons simultaneously, we get into the settings. So we could change the wheel size. Um, it looks like there's this other input. This might be like voltage and then brightness. So one, two, three, I can see the, the screen getting brighter. I kind of like it bright. 
and then miles or kilometers. This is where I can switch units. So that's very handy. We are in Canada right now and that's where we're using kilometers and stuff. Um, so that's it. Once you're done, hold the M button again for a couple seconds and we're back. And that's it. So with that said, maybe we'll hop on and take this thing for a ride. So here's a shot of the display in direct sunlight. And again, with that grayscale look, it's, it's pretty high contrast, fairly visible. I'm going to take it up to assist level five just to show you how powerful this can be accelerating. I love how quiet it is. It's just very smooth. These gearless direct drive motors, there are no gears rubbing on each other. It's just magnets and it's a pure sine wave converter. So your controller, it's not going to buzz the same way as some of the cheaper ones um, do. So let's do it. We'll ease in. This is a variable speed. So if I just gently touch it, we'll get that low power. And as soon as I really push it, we're gonna get some, some high power and speed. Beautiful. cadence sensor here, it's, it's actually uh, more of an advanced cadence and torque sensor. Apparently Thun is, is the name. I am less familiar with it, but it's a nice combination because there are times where, given this is a single speed drivetrain, you, you kind of can't keep up at the really high speeds, especially if you get that speed key and you unlock the 26 miles per hour. So having, having that sensor measure just movement is nice combines with the, the trigger throttle. But then also having it sense torque, if I really start to push harder, it's going to accelerate a bit faster, especially in those, those lower levels of assist. So I think it's just a, a really fantastic setup that way. And the bottom bracket seems well sealed. You know, it's, it's not super clean. Some of the wires are a little bit exposed down here, but that's gonna make it easier to service uh, over time. Okay guys, from here you can see that 16 tooth freewheel 39 tooth steel chain ring up front, aluminum alloy paint matched chain cover. There's no slap guard sticker here because it's a single speed and we've got that sliding rear dropout so that keeps it really tight. The chain really isn't gonna bounce around. So I'm gonna hop on this, I'm gonna pedal along, do some pedal assist and some throttle. You can hear that motor. Very satisfying. And I can definitely feel that regen when I'm using that right brake lever for the rear rear wheel and it's activating and it's, it's recouping some of that energy to recharge the battery a little bit. It's nice when you've got a heavier bike like this. Um, it's a feature you don't see very often because most of the hub motors these days are planetary geared motors. They weigh less. You don't have this cogging action, which on this bike, if I just spin the wheel, you'll notice it doesn't, it doesn't continue to spin super smoothly it sort of winds down a little faster because there is this uh, you know magnets and they're kind of repelling in there and they're recouping some energy but it does create a little bit of drag if you're pedaling unassisted Well guys, that is the Vintage Tracker Classic. Had a lot of fun looking at this. It's just a really pleasant bike to ride around. I love how quiet it is. Gets a lot of really positive attention and some fun conversations. Uh, thank you to Vintage Iron in downtown Vancouver for loaning me this demo bike and to Vintage Electric. It's always fun to talk to Andrew and get the story and get all the stats and everything worked out. Um, for the full written review on this, check out electricbikereview.com where I have a comparison tool. You can look at the 72 volt scrambler that I reviewed recently. Uh, I can ask people about what accessories they like. I've got a forum set up for vintage electric and it's kind of nice to get to chat with other owners and you know, get the, get the real scoop. I love you guys, ride safe, and we'll see you next time.